What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to look at hashing passwords for our app with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at hashing passwords for our users. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've been working on our user list here. In the last video, we sort of added this uh, favorite color thing. We migrated stuff and we added this ability to delete. Now I want to start talking about authentication because we're eventually here going to build sort of a blog app and we want people to be able to log in, make blog posts, and we want to keep track of who does what. So if I make a post, I don't want somebody else to be able to delete it, and I don't want to be able to delete somebody else's post and vice versa and all that good stuff. So we need some user authentication. And with Flask, there really isn't a one size fits all sort of authentication scheme that you can tap into. We're going to need to sort of work on a lot of little moving parts and kind of cobble it all together to make this work. It's kind of the best way to do it. And in this video, we're going to start to do that. Now, it's going to take many videos to do this because, like I said, we have to cobble together a bunch of stuff. But in this video, we're going to start to look at passwords. So anytime you want to log into a website, you need a password. And these days, it's so important not to store passwords in a database. You need to do something called hashing, which sort of converts your password into a hash, which is a big, long string of text and characters and things. And we'll take a look at that. And then sort of behind the scenes does some voodoo to match up the password with the hash and uh, allows people to log in and stuff. So that's what we're going to start to set up in this video now. It may not make a whole lot of sense, but I hopefully will be able to explain it good enough for you to where you get at least get a sort of understanding of what's going on. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask Friday videos. And it is Flask Friday. I think it's going to be a nice day here in Vegas this Friday. It's finally summer here. Ugh, getting very hot very quick. So let's head over to our hello.py. And this is the file where we've been working on. Now, eventually, we're going to have to break this into several files because this is starting to get unruly. And as you sort of scale your app, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to keep everything in one file. But we'll talk about that in a future video. For now, we need to import some stuff that we're going to be using. Now, uh, we need something called Verksug. Verksug. And if we head back over to our terminal, Control Control C to break out of it. And if we go pip freeze. When we installed Flask, it came with something called Verkzug. Verkzug. Verkzug, right? And so that's what we're going to use to sort of hash these passwords and stuff. So uh, let me make our terminal run again. And we need to first import that. So let's come up to our hello.py file and let's go from Verk, Verk, Zug. I don't know how you pronounce that. Dot security. We want to import. Now we need to import two things here. We need to be able to generate a hash, and the hash is what your password will turn into. And then we also need to be able to check that hash to make sure it's the right one for your password. So we need two things. So that the first one is generate underscore password underscore hash, right? And that sort of makes sense. The other one is check underscore password underscore hash. So okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. Now, before we get started with this, let's head back over to our website. Now, we're going to be making a change to our users, right? Up until now, there's no field for passwords. And we're not, and we're not going to do that in this video, but we will eventually. So that means we're going to have to change the database model for our users, our user model. Now, we've already got some users. And every, whenever you start making changes to things like this, especially with passwords, it could get a little tricky. So what I'm going to do is just delete all of these users, right? So we can just boom, 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 boom. Start with a fresh slate. So now any changes we make to the, the model won't mess with old users. We don't have any users. We can recreate them easily enough once we make all these changes. So head back over to our code. I definitely recommend you do that. So we've imported the thing. So now let's come down to our users model. And here it is. And let's, uh, you know, do some password stuff, right? It's very exciting. Excla exclamation point, right? <laughs> I don't know. All right. So Let's create another field here. And we want this one to be password underscore hash. And we want to set that equal like everything else to db dot column. Right? And now this is going to be a db dot string. And we want it to be 128 characters, sort of nice and long if possible. 
And okay, that's all we really need to do there. So now we need to come down below here and create a few properties and things. So let's go at property. And then let's define a couple of functions. So we want to define a password function. And we want to pass in self because when we create when we enter a password when we're signing up, we want to be able to take that password and change it to a hash. And later on, we want to check that hash to make sure it matches up with the password. So we need to write a couple of functions that will do that. So really, really simple here. First, we just raise an attribute error. And then let's pass password is not a readable attribute exclamation point. <laughs> right? All right. Uh, misspelled raise. So raise. There we go. So this, you know, if something goes wrong, this will just flash a little message, a little error. Okay, that looks good. Now we've got our at property here, we also need an at password dot setter. Okay, and here we want to define password, we want to pass in self and password. And here we want to go self dot password underscore hash equals remember that password hash is right up here, we just define that we want to set that equal to a generate underscore password. Uh, there it is it popped right up hash. Right. So what we're saying here is essentially, hey, take whatever they typed in in the password field and generate a password hash out of it. We also want to pass in that password into that function. So we're saying, hey, take the password that they whoops, come back. We're saying, hey, take this password that they entered in up here. Right and then pass it into this function that generates a password hash, right? So okay, that will set the hash, right? Set the password hash. So okay, that looks good. Finally, now we need to define verify underscore password. And we also want to pass in self and password to this one as well. So this will sort of check to make sure hey, is this hash in this go with this password and vice versa. And remember up here, we imported the check password hash. That's what that's what this is going to do. So Alright, so let's verify this guy. We just want to return uh, check underscore password hash. And then we want to pass in here self dot. Uh, well, this guy right here, just copy this so I don't make a mistake because it's Friday. <laughs> right? And we also want to pass in password. Okay, that's good for now. Go ahead and save this. So let's head over to our terminal and play around with this and see what we've sort of uh, got here. So let's break out of our server control C. and let's run the flask shell. So Alright, so let's import that user model. So let's go from Hello, import users. Now let's set a variable to that users class. Now let's set a password. Let's just create a fake password. We're not actually going to register a user, but we can set up a password to see if this all worked, right? So let's go you dot password equals and let's just pick a password cat, right? All right, we got no error. So that looks good. So let's see if it'll return the password. It shouldn't. So let's go you password. Because uh oh, we don't want it to return a password, we want a hash. And so we're getting this little message here. Password is not a readable attribute. That's exactly what we want to see. So okay, it looks like it's working so far. Let's now call the password hash. So let's go you dot password underscore hash. And now boom, we get the hash. So this is a hash, it always looks like gobbledygook sort of like this, you know. And uh, so it looks like it's generated a hash, it looks like it's done it successfully. But we can check even more. So let's verify. So let's go you dot verify underscore password. And let's pass in our password. So if we give the password, will it match up to the hash? If it does, we've entered the right password. And oops, we have got an error. So did I make a typo? I wonder. Verify password that looks correct. Let's try this again, you dot verify underscore password, we want to pass in cat. There we go. Not sure what the issue was the first time, but okay, it says true. Right? So imagine we entered the password, it's saying, hey, 
this password matches this hash. Let's try a different password. Right, so let's go u dot verify underscore password. Let's try dog, right? So enter your password, I enter dog. Now we know it's supposed to be cat. Does the program? Yes, it does, that's false. So this is working. We haven't linked it up with the website itself yet to where we can you know, add users and passwords and stuff, but this is the first step. And we're gonna take this little steps at a time because this is a lot to wrap your brain around. Now we can see something interesting here. Let's create another user. Let's call this u2. And so let's say u2 equals users. Let's go u2 dot password equals, and let's do cat again, right? So now let's check the hash for that. So let's go u2 dot password underscore hash. Now you might expect this hash to be the same as our first hash because the password is the same. Well, let's see. Well, we've get this, here's our, pat, our hash. It starts out with 15, 150,000, so does this one. But this one goes then dollar sign YCH. This one goes goes dollar, dollar sign NFE. So you can see these are two different hashes, even though the passwords are the same. So this is a very good thing. This means everything is working correctly because even if two different users pick the same password, you don't want them to have the same hashes. You want it to be different. And this Verkzug thing has done that. It creates a different hash for a different password based on a different time that it's created and a user that's created and all that stuff, which is exactly what you wanna see with ha password hashing. So that's a very good thing. So, okay, we're taking a very first baby step here. We've got our password hashing stuff complete. It wasn't that difficult. We had a little hiccup when I tried to verify the password. I think I maybe didn't save the file after I did this or something, but it worked the second time around. So I don't know, one of those Friday things. So again, we just, create a, pass, a password hash field in our model, just like all the other fields we've created, right? And we set a property and we define the password and we put a little error message here if something goes wrong. And then we set, it. we create a setter, right? So then we take the password and we generate a password hash. And then we also need to verify that password hash by checking the password hash, which is this stuff up here, generate password, password hash and check password hash, which come from Verkzug. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49, taxes all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.